all these things, to have a companion, to raise a family, then is it as valuable anymore? And, and I think that when, when, maybe I'm being too judgmental here, but when I was younger and all my friends were graduating from college, it wasn't so much about being married as being the merit badge, it was having the wedding was the merit badge. Yeah. Like, I'm planning the wedding. Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point as you get older and maybe you're single and, you know, it's not so important anymore. And, you know, to be honest, by the time I got to the point of being married, my, my friends were on their second marriages and it was a different reason that people were getting married. You know, it was a, a different reason to come together. So uh, who knows what the impetus of, is it the wedding? Is it the marriage? Do you I don't have to think show there's any broad brush stroke. I, I really true. don't. One of my colleagues at work what, has a boyfriend, well, had a boyfriend, lived with him 23 years. They just got married in October. After 23 years of living together, and pretty much being married, you know, going on trips together, living together, owning homes together. A they decided, basically, mm -hmm. and they decided after 23 years, let's make it legal. Now, perhaps the fact of the matter that both of them are lawyers had something to do with it. But, mm -hmm. you know, they, they came to a conclusion, you know, nearly a quarter century into their relationship that they wanted it. Well, here are some interesting statistics just to fuel this discussion some more. In 1977, 43% of people said that an ideal marriage was one where the husband provides for the family. In 2010, that figure dropped from 43% to 30%. Here's something else. 19% of uh, women were asked, should a husband provide for them? And only 19% said that was a requirement for them to find a husband. They did the same survey with men. 41% of men felt that they should be the provider in the marriage. Mm. There's a huge disparity there between our perceptions of what is needed from women's perspective, what the husband used to bring to the table, is not so much of a need anymore. Whereas the men still feel like if they're in a marriage, they need to be able to provide for the women. That gap, that, that gender gap that's emerging mm -hmm. is one of the reasons why they're saying, that we have more than just a marriage problem, we have a socioeconomic problem yeah. that's growing side by side along with this marriage problem. Well, I think part of it has to do with the economy, too. I mean, we've, see, we've all seen the figures for the past couple of years how a lot of men are losing their jobs and women are returning to the workforce mm -hmm. who previously were homemakers. And it, there is a tipping of the scales now where there are more women out there that are gainfully employed than there are men. And so that changes your perception of what you went into the marriage with. And what you're willing to put up with. Exactly. Let's just face it. I think women feel uh, that it's far easier now for them to exit a scenario uh, because they don't feel quite as tied to it or mm -hmm. rather they're not desperate enough to stay in it. Right. Right? And a lot of them are now able to also say, well, I won't even enter into this situation because what are the perks? I'm bringing right. all the perks to myself, basically. Why enter into this and add complication into my world? Right. That's, that's, you know, one of the, the reasons cited. When did they say provide for, for you? Do they say financially? Financially, specifically. Financially, specifically. Well, you know, just a few minutes ago, ladies, we were talking about how hard we are on, our, on ourselves. But I think this data is showing us that men are very hard on themselves, too. Because I think here they're struggling. Are, right? Even when women are not necessarily expecting them to be the sole provider in a marriage relationship, they have that expectation of mm -hmm. themselves. And that's a, a lot of pressure, particularly in these economic times. So we need to be mindful of that. We don't know what that Feels internalized like. feeling is of not feeling worried because you're not providing for your That's family. a very good yeah. point, Shilpa. I'll just uh, take your point there a little further. When I was in college, I took a, a wonderful class. It was called Images of Masculinity. Mm -hmm. And uh, what that class was trying to show was that the image of masculinity has changed over the last several decades. It used to be we had very strong characters, whether they were on TV, mm -hmm. uh, embodying the husband, the provider, that very sort of stable image that we're used to. We had strong men on television, followed by women. That has changed now. If you look at reality TV, you look at what's in the news, what's sensational today, it's all about marriages that don't work, people that are living single, that have these very different scenarios that they're living in, and it's acceptable. Socially, it's acceptable. So the image of masculinity has also changed. We don't have those strong figures anymore. Consequently, to your point, I think men are struggling to figure out where and how to fit and where and how to be that image, that uh, what is that new image? They don't exactly have something to follow. I, don't, I guess my concern with this entire dialogue is that the romance is gone. <laughs> you know, we're, 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 we're analyzing everything, we're looking at statistics, we're looking at socioeconomic levels and all that, but 
Well, it's, it's, it's not between, working. It's yeah, not working. it is just that the romance is all gone. There's, there's <laughs> no it exists. date night with your husband <laughs> anymore. That's not what we're talking about. You know, when we talk about marriage, we're, we're it's such a clinical discussion that we're having. And, you know, if, if you're going to resort to a clinical discussion about anything, maybe it's not something that's right for you. But as you know, marriage is more than romance. It's a partnership. It, it's, it's, it requires things that are sometimes unromantic and unpleasant. And I think the romance part of a relationship does exist. And I think in some ways, marriage adds a whole lot of responsibility onto that romantic aspect. Therefore, people just prefer to cohabitate because they don't want to take on that responsibility. I just celebrated my 10-year anniversary with my husband. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> he's, he's one of the hosts that comes on the show occasionally. We just celebrated our 10-year anniversary. We've spent a good number of years working together. We've, we're raising two children together. And there's a lot of, you know, can you do the dishes today? And I'm going to do the laundry. And there's a lot of that. But, you know, we make it a point. And I think this is important for everyone in the relationship. We really make it a point to have some romance. You know, whether it's a date night, whether it's just a call to say, hey, I just wanted to say hi, I love you, honey, I'll talk to you later, I'm not going to see you tonight because I'm coming home at 10 o'clock at night or something like that. <laughs> we, we make it a point to in, remind each other that we're loved. And I think a lot more people who are so caught up in the day-to-day -day struggles of what life is, you know, there's a lot of work just to struggle on and move forward, we need to go back to remi remembering why we chose Slowing each other. Down. Yeah. Slowing down. Slowing down a little bit. Right? We're all so over-structured and over-scheduled mm -hmm. that we maybe do forget. I think you're right. You know, my mother-in-law moved in with us and will be with us for the next six months, which is great. <laughs> it, it actually is fantastic. She's a wonderful <laughs> woman, raised a wonderful son. But it's like I got a wife out of the deal. <laughs> I mean, she's like doing all of the cooking and wants to like clean the house. Which has freed up a whole lot of time for my husband and I to actually have a conversation together, yeah. which which helps. But everybody doesn't have that luxury of you know, and you know, when God, if we ever have children, talk about overstructuring things. Well, it will yeah, totally to the, stress us out. Yeah. You know, to that point, I was reading this article in the New York Times that actually surprised me because there are so many overworked moms, as we know. Maybe they're even stay-at-home moms who are not balancing work outside the home and inside the home. But even with the children and the home, there are all these school responsibilities, volunteering at your children's schools, which takes up a great deal of time because we're talking about all kinds of not just PTA meetings, but school functions and holiday fairs and all kinds of things that require evening work, weekend work, sometimes early mornings. And there were women interviewed for this article in the New York Times saying, we're pushing back, we're saying no. The schools are fed up because they don't have the budget, and we can't volunteer. You know, is that what you're count doing? me in as one of the no's. Um, I work 50 to 60 hours a week. There are several nights a week where I don't even see. My